All right, start. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining UC Riverside's second annual SBIR STTR Con 2020. I'm Misty Madero and I'm the Industry Contracts Officer and SBIR STTR Resource Center Manager at UC Riverside. I want to welcome you to the kickoff of our two week conference where we will be bringing all the experts to you. I wanna start by recognizing our sponsors. Thank you to Aldoberto Quijada, Christopher Lorenzana and Paul Smith at the SBA. And a huge thank you to our lead center at the Orange County Inland Empire SBDC Network, Mike Daniel and Hannah Khaled for all their support and help to make this possible. Our conference is organized by UCR's EPIC Small Business Development Center and our SBIR STTR Resource Center. Our EPIC SBDC provides individualized mentorship and access to capital to technology entrepreneurs at no cost. Since its inauguration in 2018, our resource center has helped entrepreneurs submit over 50 applications and raise over 5 million in non-dilutive funding. You'll see on the screen here, these are many of the services that we can offer to our clients to help them submit winning proposals. Securing capital for a startup to develop its technology for commercialization is not easy, and the federal SBIR program has become critical in helping small businesses mature their technologies and bring them to market. Navigating the process for applying and securing these funds may be a daunting task, and we are here to help demystify the process. Over the next two weeks, you'll hear from 19 program officers from the federal agencies about how to secure SBIR funding, and we have seven expert workshops that go in depth on early stage capital investment, research design and management, formation of corporate partnerships and research commercialization guidance. We look forward to spending the next two weeks providing you with valuable insightful information about the SBIR program from the leaders in their fields. So I'd like to start by introducing Dr. Rosa Valachoa. She's the Associate Vice Chancellor of Technology Partnerships and an adjunct professor of chemical and environmental engineering at UC Riverside. She previously provided leadership to UC San Diego's Von Lee Big Center and is the founder of TechDome LLC. She also served as Associate Director of the Office of Technology Licensing and Manager of Industry Contracts at Georgia Institute of Technology. She is the inventor of two issued, issued patents and the author of more than 18 scientific publications. Please welcome Dr. Rosa Balachoa. Good morning. Thank you, Misty. Good morning, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be with you. And on behalf of the University of California Research, uh, Riverside and our Office of Technology Partnership, we are very excited to um, host over the next two weeks the second annual conference on SBI and STTR. First of all, I'd like to thank our, the organizers, Misty Madero, and Martin Kleckner for the tremendous work that they have devoted for months to get ready for this exciting event. We have over 21 um, program managers, conferences, workshops, individual meetings, with our purpose is to provide, demystify, as Misty said, the process of submission and winning an SBIR. This is a fantastic program that our government offers and it is um, our duty to help our entrepreneurs from the region access this, uh, uh, this important resource. The next slide, please. So let me tell you a little bit about our office. Um, Hannah, can I see you? this next slide, please? The next one. So let me tell you a little bit about our office. The, our office is the Office of Technology Partnerships, and our mission is to accelerate the commercialization of new ideas and technologies from the community and the university for the benefit of society. Our office is about four years old, and we have been very aggressive in putting together all the programs and necessary and the support to help innovators and entrepreneurs from the inland California to uh, uh, create companies that will, that will uh, bring jobs and investment to our region. The, this, this gamma of services that we provide is quite broad and they are offered, we decided to do it uh, from the very beginning um, to be as comprehensive as possible. 
we focus on key, five key elements that are offered to our university stakeholders as well as our community. First of all, education and training. We are an NSF i uh, site. We have over 15 mentors and entrepreneurs in residence with over 300 years of experience in the managing of technology companies. We have a very large and continuously growing um, network of partner supporters that really are committed to this region and want this region to grow. We have started our fund, the first one in the region called Highlander, with investment from our university to support early stage entrepreneurs who ask to access capital. And this is not only for the university. And second, we are actively managing two incubator spaces and um, Scott Brovsky is going to tell you more about it. The next slide, please, Han. All of this uh, infrastructure that we have put together has been post made possible thanks to the investment from the university and also from uh, the grants and grants and gifts from the federal government, the state of California, and the private sector. Today, we have already secured over 20 and invested over $20 million in public-private funding to support to the creation of programs that help our students, our faculty, and our community entrepreneurs access uh, commercialize their, their technologies and their ideas. The next one, please. So our, our, uh, our numbers are very exciting. It is, this is, uh, and is demonstrated by the vitality that this region really has. Over, see in, in the four years that we have been uh, in operation, our companies have raised over $26 million in capital and we have already worked with over 2,000 students engaged. 400 companies have been um, assisted by our small business development center and our entrepreneurial center. The next one, please. Our UCR Epic Resource Center led by Misty Madero has a loan that started two years ago has received, has um, supported the, the preparation of and submission of 50 proposals. And we have these uh, companies that we've assisted have received $5 million in funding. It is really exciting to see that this second conference has already um, received five, over 500 registrations from participants, and as I was looking at the list of uh, registrants, from as far as, not only from the United States, but as far as Chile, Morocco, everybody's very excited and wants to learn about this process. And we are more than happy to become the, the center, the uh, a knowledge center in this topic for, for this, uh, this program. The next one. So finally, the, F, the, the results and outcomes that we have demonstrated over these four years is really due to the commitment and the hard work of all the mentors and staff from UCR, as well as from the collaboration that we have from all our uh, partners. In this slide, you will see that we have, you know, out of the 400 ventures that we have supported, 50% of those have come from the university and the other 50% have come from our community. And, this, uh, and the sectors that we have supported are quite broad and, and very um, general in terms of the, the, the access to and the need of, uh, of the customer base. So we are here to, to help you. We are here to support you. And, uh, and I would really like to thank Mike Daniel and his team, Hannah, for their support and for their um, trust in uh, helping, you, helping UCR become 
and a small business development center. So now it is my pleasure to introduce Paul Smith, who is the business development specialist. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute pleasure to be participating in this program today. On behalf of the US Small Business Administration and the Orange County Inland Empire District Office and our District Director, Alberto Quijada, We'd like to welcome everyone to this program today, both attendees and our leadership that are presenting. Innovation is, a, is really critical for the growth of our world as it's most poignantly being uh, indicated by what's going on in our society today. Being able to support the visionaries and being part of uh, the innovation process is truly an honor. So I'd like to thank all those attending and all of those that are presenting and the leadership that are carrying it forward. In addition, I'd like to give a special thanks to UCR and our Orange County Inland Empire SBDC network for making this possible. It's truly a pleasure. Non-diluted funds is critical for the growth in the area of innovation. Technology and innovative firms are truly a cluster in our district and uh, supporting R&D is certainly an interest of SBA and our government. So thank you all very much for the opportunity to be here today. I look forward to this great conference. Thank you, Paul. I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Scott Brofsky is an angel investor, startup mentor, and the director of Epic SBDC at UC Riverside. Scott has been a founder or founding executive of a number of startups and was a part of the global leadership team at Disney that worked to build the Avengers franchise into a global powerhouse with his focus being the interactive game space. Please welcome Scott. Thanks, Misty. Great to be here. And uh, yeah, a, a excellent overview already by, by Dr. Ochoa. And um, again, you know, we do appreciate the support from the SBA, uh, Mike Daniel and the team at the Lead Center, and also um, the uh, state of California, the office of, uh, from the governor from GoBiz. So if we can go to the next slide, Hannah. Or actually the next slide. <laughs> so uh, Roosevelt already covered some of the metrics, but I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, the key to the success of uh, the Epic SBDC program is our mentor team. And Roosevelt already shared that slide with you. We have, we have 15 and now uh, we're bringing on two more mentors. So 17 amazing mentors who help uh, the startups that uh, we serve. And uh, we did about 284 uh, startup, you know, mentoring uh, sessions uh, and what we do with our team it's a little different than some of the other mentoring programs out there um, we do what we call a deep dive and uh, a very hands-on process so with some of the the startups that we mentor uh, we may do 50 60 100 hours with four or five different mentors in order to get them along the path of commercialization so we're going to talk about that in just a second we also uh, this number needs to be updated um, it, we, we are at about 14 million in capital raise that includes SBIR as Rose Bell already covered, and uh, also uh, equity capital, as, as well as other um, uh, forms of uh, support, financial support to scale and grow these startups. So if we can go to the next slide. And also, I, just by the way, um, we're going to go through this pretty quickly, but if you do have questions, um, I'll, uh, I'll try to answer. You can throw it in the Q&A box there. Um, I already answered one question, which is, um, can we work with uh, startups that are outside of the Inland Empire? And the answer is yes. Uh, we serve uh, startups. Actually, we've um, started to work with startups globally. And um, I'll roll through right now kind of how we, we serve the startups with our program. So the, the, the key thing that we're trying to do here is we're, we're trying to not only move projects out of the research labs, but as, as Rosabelle mentioned, we're also working and mentoring with what we call our community startups. So that's startups that aren't necessarily affiliated with a university, but that also needs help or support and have the ability to apply for an SBIR grant or they also might need other help. And so some of the other ways that we help startups, what we focus on, um, we obviously spend a lot of time working to help the uh, founders build their teams. So if it's a startup that's coming out of the university setting, oftentimes uh, we'll need to help them find a CEO or, or other C-level executive to help them grow. We've done uh, quite a, few, a lot of that. We've got uh, several um, startups we can talk about a little bit more later that have, um, uh, seen success by bringing on an established uh, C-level executive and then working with the inventor or researcher 
uh, to start growing the company. And the other thing we do is, you know, we help the startups, um, you know, kind of understand what it takes to commercialize a product. And especially those that are coming out of the lab that may not have entrepreneurial experience or have startup experience. So we basically put them on a, on a program that gives them accountability. And as they hit milestones and they, and they start to grow, that leads them to um, be able to do other things like be ready to raise capital and grow even more. And um, so basically kind of from start to scale, um, that's our focus with the Epic SBDC program. Uh, next slide, please. And so the process we use is um, it's, it's, there, there's a, a pretty famous methodology. Um, it's taught, we are an i core site, I believe Rosabella already mentioned that, but um, it's, it's a lean startup, lean launch pad. Um, there's all kinds of lean, but basically what we do is uh, we focus on a, a few things. The, the main thing is um, we do a lot of work with the startups that we mentor with customer discovery. And a lot of that is done through our i program, which is a wonderful program that Jay Gilberg uh, and, and the team run here uh, at UCR. We also talk a lot about secret sauce. And so what makes you different? Um, you know, what makes you different than the other companies that are in your vertical or other startups that are in your vertical? And then um, we talk about things like, you know, how, you know, what's the optimal uh, way to, to build your entity? So is it an LLC? Is it a, is it a Delaware C Corp? Should you even incorporate? Is it worth spending the capital? Um, we do a lot of work um, with a, a tremendous uh, group of um, basically vetted partners that we've um, worked with and uh, found over the years. And so we introduce startups to um, great IP attorneys, business attorneys, accountants, uh, CFOs, et cetera, et cetera. And um, then we will help, working, help work on a budget. So, you know, putting together a, a, a what's called a pro forma or forward-looking financials is key uh, to any startup's uh, growth as well as being able to raise capital. So we put a lot of time into working with the startup on uh, working on their financial plan, their budget, and their pro forma. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we do a lot of work with uh, basically mapping out what milestones need to be hit to move the startup along uh, the path to commercialization. And one of the key things, of course, as uh, those of you who are already been entrepreneurs know is um, product market fit. So we do a lot of we do a, a lot of work with the startup on establishing product market fit. And that's basically through a process of, of, of testing, iterating, um, again, customer feedback, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, as I already mentioned, we have um, brought, uh, I think we're up to four now, uh, CEOs uh, to the projects that we've uh, been mentoring. And uh, we've also helped find other talent for the teams. And that could include um, CTOs, uh, developers, um, hardware experts, uh, other, basically pretty much any uh, area of your company. Uh, we have a pretty extensive network between this entire team uh, at UCR, all the mentors Rosabella already mentioned. Uh, so we uh, tend to do a good job of helping you find talent as well. And then of course, funding is a, is a, big, uh, a big thing. It's what many of the startups that we work with come to us for. And um, if we can go to the next slide, we'll kind of get into that a bit. And uh, I see we have a question here about what are the real facts about your funds and your deployment? Where can we find your invested financials? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. If you're talking about our, our, our uh, fund that uh, Rosabelle mentioned, which is the Highlander Venture Fund, uh, we do have some press releases on that. I don't believe we have a website for it, but you can send me a note and uh, I can get you more details on the companies we've funded out of that out of that fund, out of Highlander Venture Fund. I also want to mention that we do um, work with about 50 other investors, uh, both at the angel level and the venture capital level. So it's not just Highlander Fund that we introduce our startups to, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, but anyway, just wanted to give you a quick uh, success story that um, this is, a, this is a, a startup we're extremely excited about called Sea Lion. Um, we have helped bring them out of the lab, uh, form a corporation. We found uh, a, a fractional CEO, Mark, who's a, an amazing uh, talent in the clean tech, clean energy space. He's now their fractional CEO. Uh, we've also worked to help them get a CalSeed grant of $250,000. And now we are working on uh, fundraising for them as well as he having, helping them hit some of their milestones in terms of product development. And uh, we have had a, 
a great mentor team uh, on that, led by our mentor, Art Sawyer, who is an expert in uh, clean tech and batteries, as well as other uh, verticals. So we can go to the next slide. So uh, this is kind of one of the things that uh, a lot of uh, startups, especially those that have raised SBIR, struggle with is, you know, um, can we raise funding? Should we raise funding? So one of the things that, um, you know, we talk about when we mentor these startups is, you know, we take, a, obviously, we've already done the deep dive on all the different aspects of the business. We already know, we've already worked on the financial plan. Um, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing is that investors want to talk about and see, um, you know, I, ideas do matter somewhat, especially if it's something that is, um, you know, coming out of a research university and it's protected IP. And, um, you know, that can be obviously a, a big advantage uh, in, in many verticals like clean tech, biotech, um, uh, ag tech, and other, other key verticals that um, we especially uh, do a lot of work in. But in any case, so the idea is important in some cases. In other cases, the idea is, the idea is not that big a deal. It's really the execution. Uh, investors are typically looking for a very strong team. One of the challenges, as I mentioned, of many of the projects that have been SBIR, SBIR funded is that they have not built a strong enough team yet to be able to raise capital. So again, that's typically something that needs to be addressed for many of the uh, SBIR funded uh, companies that we mentor. And then the other question is, you know, look, is this a scalable idea? You, you know, we can, we, we do an entire, you know, multiple hour deep dive into, into venture capital funding. So we can obviously don't have time for that now because we're just doing this in a few minutes. But in any case, um, you really want to think about, you know, is, is your, uh, your idea, whether it's a product or service, is it scalable? And so the example I just used here is, you know, what's the difference between a local florist? A local florist is probably going to serve a small area of a city. They're definitely not a candidate to raise angel investment or venture capital. They may be able to get other help to grow their business. They could potentially uh, raise money from friends and family. They may be able to get an SBA loan or other, uh, you know, uh, small business vehicle to help them grow, but they're not venture investable. And so what does it mean to be uh, venture investable really is, can you scale? And so an example here is, this is another flower company called The Bokes. They're out of uh, LA. I, this is an older um, uh, story here in the press. I believe they've raised something over $50 million now in BC. But the, the, the point is, is that they were able to present a compelling case that with their idea, their team, and um, you know, their proven ability to, to hit milestones and scale, they were able to raise capital that, was allow them, uh, that, would, that basically allowed them to bring on more talent um, get more customers, increase your revenue, and, and grow. And um, so that's something you want to think about. And we help you with that. Our mentor team helps you evaluate whether you're fundable or not. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a little bit of an eye chart. Um, but, uh, the, the, basically, what I wanted to do is just kind of just do a quick uh, overview of you know, some of the some of the things that we kind of we, we help with uh, with our team. Uh, obviously, uh, we've talked about, um, you know, venture funding already. Um, but there are some other things that uh, other areas that we, we do help with. Another that's become popular is called equity crowdfunding. That's different than um, crowdfunding. So it's not Kickstarter, Indiegogo. There are platforms like Republic, WeFunder, um, Seed Invest. There's, there's a, a lot of them now, but those are some of the, the top ones. So we have several of our startups that have actually gone through this crowdfunding process and they've raised anywhere from 175,000 up to $1.7 million, which is the, the, the cap that you can do with, a, with a, what's called a crowd note. And so the point is, is that, you know, it's not just angel investment and, 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 and venture capital that can help you scale beyond if you do get an SBIR. Um, also, there are things like equity crowdfunding, which can be very helpful. And, um, and then, of course, there are strategic investors. So that's something else that um, we uh, do a lot of work with is, you know, maybe it, it isn't a fit for your technology or the vertical you're in to find the right venture capital investor, maybe a strategic investor. So maybe a Fortune, you know, 500 or Fortune 1000 company is the right investor for, for you and your, and your product or your service. So anyway, that's, that's kind of what we do on, on the fundraising front. Um, 
Friends and family is not something we really get involved in. That's typically, obviously, um, you know, that's the entrepreneurs or the founding team's business in terms of how they're able to uh, access capital from their, their personal network. But where we really get involved is um, uh, at the, um, you know, what we would consider the launch and traction phase uh, that you see down there at the bottom. And then obviously, as you get into the, the, the growth and scale, the breakout and the established uh, uh, you know, uh, startups, then you start to get into, you know, um, bank financing uh, against, um, you know, there's all kinds of different mechanisms as you've raised kind of past that series A, series B um, round of financing. And we typically are not as involved in that because in general, once you've raised your series A round, um, the, the, the venture capitalists will kind of take over for Epic SBDC and our team and they'll kind of take you to the next level. And then we kind of go back and work with the next startup that we're uh, trying to help bring out of the lab or uh, trying to, um, you know, help scale as a community startup. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the ways we're, we're, we do um, some of these things in terms of um, helping startups get exposure uh, to investors are through um, the various things. We have this pitch event series that uh, we've been running with uh, Mike Daniel and his team at the Lead Center, as well as our partners at UCI, uh, Applied Innovation, their SBDC, and then also Octane, which is a, a great group that um, you all should know in Orange County that um, also does a wonderful job uh, helping startups raise capital, as well as put, they put on some amazing events uh, that you can check out. But in any case, we do these virtual demo days and what it does is, and we invite investors to be, to, to basically be present. Uh, the, the startups pitch, here's a couple examples of a few of the, um, of our Epic SBDC mentored startups that have pitched at the virtual demo days. Uh, we've got another one coming up and I'm, I'm sure uh, Hannah will probably, uh, kill me for not remembering the date, but I, I it's coming up in, in the next couple of weeks and we'll, we'll throw it there in the, in the, uh, in the chat. But, um, but in any case, um, this and other uh, events that, that we are part of at Epic, Epic SBDC, we also work with Tech Coast Angels, Pasadena Angels, and some of the larger angel groups um, doing um, exclusive demo days with them where we'll put together uh, three or four or five of uh, the strongest startups that are in our program and have them pitch to, to their group. So lots of cool stuff on the pitch events. Uh, next slide, please. So talking about some, a few success stories, um, this is a startup, Bacillar Biotech. It's a nanomechanical, uh, patent, patented uh, nanomechanical gene delivery um, technology that was invented in the labs at UCR by Dr. Masarau. We were able to uh, find the CEO and now co-founder Brinley Lee to come in. And you know, it's been a really great you know, story just to watch them over the last couple of years go from something that was a project in the lab to um, starting to grow, scale, find this, the CEO, and now they've uh, raised a $500,000 seed round from our, uh, our, our, our venture uh, group, Highlander Fund, which Roosevelt previously mentioned. And now we're actually working on um, a $3 million round for them, which will include other venture capitalists and other investors um, in addition to the Highlander Fund. So pretty exciting to see something that's an idea in the lab and then you know, accelerate out and start to grow, start to hire. Uh, they're bringing high paying jobs to our region, which is one of the other goals of our, our program. Uh, next slide, please. So another key thing that, um, that we, we do in addition to everything else that we've mentioned is we partner with um, and we help run key uh, physical spaces. Now, I know with COVID, of course, it's a little bit different. Uh, physical spaces aren't, uh, you know, as, as uh, uh, I guess, needed right this second, but they will be, and in the past, they have been. So Excite is an incubator that we uh, work together with the city of Riverside, the county of Riverside, and um, UC Riverside, as well as Epic SBDC. Jennifer on our team uh, manages it. She does a wonderful job. And um, we have, um, I think about 20 startups that are, that, are, that are there right now, not necessarily physically, but if you can go to the next slide, we can talk about a couple of success stories. Nope, did we lose Hannah? Can we go to the next slide? Oh, thanks, Hannah. Um, 
so these are three startups that uh, are both at Excite in the incubator, but also uh, have been mentored by our team at Epic SBDC. So FarmSense is uh, a, a, another great story of, of university IP that we helped uh, along the way to start to scale, commercialize. Uh, one of our mentors actually uh, left our, mo our mentor program and went full time uh, with FarmSense as a co-founder, Leslie Hickel, who's, who's been phenomenal helping that team grow. Uh, we also have our, our team of mentors have put a tremendous amount of time into helping uh, FarmSense. And the great news is that they've uh, ra raised over, um, actually prior to this 1.2 million, they raised something like $7 million in SBIR funding for this technology. They're now uh, out, graduated from Excite. They've gotten their own office space in Riverside. They started to hire uh, talent, which is great for our economy. And we're working on a $1.5 million venture round uh, with them right now to raise that. So really excited about what's going on with FarmSense. We also, um, again, it's not all about UCR uh, research labs. We also uh, have done quite a bit of work with a startup called Globe Biomedical. And that technology was developed uh, in, at Cal Baptist University, one of our partners. And they uh, also have just graduated from Excite. They raised a uh, million dollars in SBIR funding. And they, again, they've got an office space in Riverside and they're starting to hire, bringing high paying jobs to the region. And then as they um, hit more milestones, we'll also be assisting them with their, uh, their uh, venture capital raise. And then the, another amazing story for the region is Blue. They have um, basically, I believe we've been mentoring them for over four years now, but in any case, amazing team they have not only graduated from excite but they also have had one of the most successful uh, or actually the most successful uh, equity crowdfunding uh program raise uh of any of the startups so they maxed out the 1.7 million dollars plus they had a famous bay area investor come in and invest another million dollars uh an investor named tim draper out of the bay area so they are doing really well, rapidly growing. They're actually looking for a space that's large enough for, for their growing team. Um, I believe, I'm not sure exactly how, where they are. I think they're about 17 or 18 people now and they're, they're hiring more talent. So again, um, really great to have um, an incubator like Excite to support this region. And there are also other great incubators in the region we support as well. And we are also, next slide please, we are also launching uh, an, an incubator and uh, it, it was actually would have already been launched, but we had a little bit of a uh, COVID uh, induced delay, unfortunately, but um, we're going to be launching uh, what is the only life science incubator in the Inland, in the Inland Empire. And it's going to happen in October, 2020. Our, our team member, David Pearson, and uh, has done just a phenomenal job getting that up and running as well as um, Dr. Ochoa's, uh, uh, the vision that she had to actually um, get this thing to happen and, and bring in the funding a few years ago, um, we were able to, as it says here, bring in $2.5 million of state-of-the-art equipment, the, the best of the best equipment. Uh, we're also in this amazing building, which is called the MRB, and it is, uh, a, a, I believe, a 200 and something million dollar state-of-the-art. Uh, it's a lead, it's the only... Uh, lead platinum certified building uh, in our in the inland. Or I believe there may be more now, but I think it's still the only one. So anyway, just just a phenomenal space. It's on campus. The other thing that's really cool about it, though, is that we are we are going to um, uh, not just have you know university startups uh, in this space, but um, community entrepreneurs have the ability if they have uh, a, a startup that needs uh, bench space or, or you know, this type of equipment that is, a, you know, if you're a life science, biotech, ag tech startup, they can actually apply to, uh, to David's team and, um, you know, get in, get bench space. And then, of course, they'll get mentoring and support from our, our team at Epic SBDC to help them grow. So we're really, really excited about uh, this uh, this new incubator. So um, if you are a life science startup uh, and you're interested in checking it out, um, please get in touch with us and we'll get you more info. 
Um, next slide, please. So that's pretty much it. I think I uh, hit my mark of uh, uh, finishing by 9, 9.40. I don't know. I, it doesn't look like there are any questions. So this is the contact info. If you want to get in touch, if you need any help with your startup, and um, if you need any help with um, your SBIR uh, or anything else uh, related to growing your startup, please get in touch with us. And uh, we appreciate everyone who's here. And uh, we're looking forward to getting to know you all better over the next two weeks of this amazing conference that uh, Misty and Martin have uh, put together for us. So, oh, uh, Amir has a question. Okay, go ahead, Amir. Do you want to type your question in or, Amir? Well, while we're waiting for Amir's question, oh, uh, let's see. I hope it's gone now. All right, I'm not sure what's going on there. I thought we had a couple of questions coming in. Um, there are people writing just some random things. Oh, uh, are we required to wear, oh, are we required to wear a mask in the incubator? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I believe you will. Actually, David would be better to answer that. Uh, he's leading that uh, charge, but I, 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 I don't know. I think you probably will. I think that's a rule that's on campus at this point but uh, we can get you more info about the incubator offline. So thanks for, oh, there you go. David just answered, yes. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're really, uh, really happy that you're all here and I'll turn it back over to Misty. So thanks everybody. Thanks, Scott. I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Dr. Rodolfo Torres is the Vice Chancellor for Research and Economic Development and a distinguished professor of mathematics at the University of California, Riverside. He provides a broad vision and executive leadership for campus-wide research initiatives and is responsible for inspiring and managing a diverse portfolio of research and creative activity, as well as economic development activities in coordination with the region, state, and other external partners via technology transfer, commercialization of intellectual property, and entrepreneurship. Thank you, Rodolfo, for joining us today. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Missy. So, um, good morning, everybody. And... Uh, it's, it's a really a big uh, pleasure to uh, welcome all of you, uh, probably again, several of my colleagues have already welcomed you uh, to this, uh, our second uh, SBRI conference. Um, I was really amazed to see that uh, 500 of you uh, are going to join us. And, and I think this is a testimony to the importance of the Small Business Innovation Research Funding uh, as, seed, as seed capital to move your innovation forward. Um, our, offer, our Office of Research and Economic Development um, is really committed to the growth, integrity, and diversity, and the success of all our uh, campus research and creative activities to promote economic prosperity. Um, we are, as you may know, we are one of the 10 campuses of the University of California system, uh, which is one of the largest and most successful public institutions of higher education, I would say, in the world. Um, and we, within that powerhouse, uh, our focus on research, uh, we focus on the research that contribute to the well-being of our region, um, but also that can be scaled worldwide. Um, just as an example, as a catalyst uh, for economic growth and technology innovation, our university contribute 2.7 billion to the United States economy. Um, and we proudly engage and support all our local, national, and global partners uh, to translate innovation and your visionary solution to many problems from the lab uh, to the marketplace. Um, the, the commitment of our university to research excellent and regional economic uh, growth make may, may this event even more relevant. Um, and uh, I think it reflects uh, the belief that significant progress will occur uh, only by comprehensively supporting all type of research and scholarship and impactful development uh, across all disciplines and also through our uh, geographical area. Um, as you may know, uh, this conference will present uh, 19 federal research and development agencies, which are the country, the, our country largest source of early stage funding. Um, the program to be presented by the Small Business Administration and America Seed Fund provide over $3.7 billion in funding to small business uh, each year in broad technological areas. Um, so our campus excel at many areas of research, uh, and we are relentless in, in our doubt to promote solutions 
uh, to difficult societal, scientific, and technological problems. Uh, and as I say, for our, not, not just our community, but also that the scale to the state, the nation, and even the world. Um, so we, we can provide you support in many ways uh, through many mechanisms. Of course, our Office of Technology Partnership and our EPIC Small Business Development Center, uh, the Life Science and XI Incubator, uh, the SBIR STTR Resource Center and the National Science Foundation Innovation Core Program, um, the access to the talent of our students through the Blackstone Lounge Pile, um, the access to capital through um, the Highlander Venture Capital Fund and several other competitive opportunities for SIM funding. And last but not least, our fast, uh, uh, fastly developing OASIS innovation part. Um, so I, I want to applaud you for all what you do, your work and innovation, um, and encourage you to take a full advantage of, of these two weeks, of which I'm sure it would be a fantastic conference. Um, thank you. Thank you for being part of this. Uh, I want to wish you the best. I hope that in a not too distant future, uh, we could interact more directly on campus and you have a, a bigger chance to, to see all what we had to offer. Uh, please stay safe. And, and again, enjoy the conference and thank you for participating. Thank you, Rodolfo. And with that, I'd like to introduce my co-host for this program, Dr. Martin Kleckner. He's an entrepreneur in residence. He has 28 years experience in operation and business development in life sciences, healthcare, oil and gas and cable television. He has advised over 115 emerging and fortune 100 companies with corporate planning and strategy, commercialization and public policy. Please welcome our resident SBIR guru, Martin Kleckner. Misty, thank you very much indeed. What an honor, 502, as Dr. Torres had indicated. That's a reflection of how incredibly important the seed capital has become for all of us and that we have 19 federal agencies that have joined us. Keep in mind that Misty and I once uh, were planning on three weeks of a conference, but uh, uh, more rational minds, I think, helped us, helped us cull it down to two weeks. And that's certainly a good idea. And that there are seven very important expertise workshops that I strongly urge you to join. So Hannah, maybe if we could take a peek at the ensuing slides to take a look at what the um, next one after that. Uh, and, and there's this one and, and we won't flip to the next one yet, but um, so as Dr. Torres had indicated, uh, this is a big deal, SBAIR. This is our indeed our seed capital. He had mentioned $3.7 billion in annual funding for our capital. It's the largest source of early stage funding that we have in the US right now. This conference is a powerful opportunity for you to hear directly from program directors, program managers from 19 agencies, and some of them you may not have even heard of before. So I strongly urge you to attend as many as you possibly can, learn as much as you can, ask questions, and uh, if you have not arranged for a one-on-one -on -one meeting, Misty, there may still be time, not entirely certain to, to make appointments with at least a few of them anyway. So this is indeed your seed capital. I can't underscore enough the workshops that are occurring at one o'clock every, uh, every day of this conference. This is an opportunity to meet with experts. And for any of you who have ever attended uh, any of my workshops, you probably have mer uh, heard me mention something called prospective deal killers. Those are the areas that we uh, make most of our mistakes with. So I made absolutely certain, Misty and I did, that we provide a panel workshop which focuses on the top six areas that are the biggest challenges for us. That's team composition. Those are the formation of corporate partnerships. Many of us may not have uh, the background or the credentials or the credibility, but formation of corporate partnerships is one way to do it, not just with corporate partnerships, but also with university research as well. 
commercialization plans with Dr. Sean Jasse from the uh, UC Riverside's Anderson School of Business. Really important. Many of us may think we know what a commercialization plan is all about. Many, many of us may see directions from the SBIR uh, funding opportunity announcements. They're not sufficient. Really encourage you to attend that. Most of us are not academically trained for research design methodology really important conference uh, workshop provided by Dr. Jillian Wilson. And then uh, Hannah, the next one uh, after that. Uh, it, no, no, preceding, back. There we go, now we're cooking. Uh, we have Dr. Ken Grice who is offering us also, in addition to what Jillian Wilson is offering us with regard to research design and management, project planning development, especially for those that are engineering oriented. Scott, you have had the opportunity to meet him already. He is hosting a top tier venture capitalist panel really encourage you to attend those as well. And the reason for doing that is that there is a way to make your SBIR research project and your award a tr seamless transition into early stage angel investor capital and also uh, uh, venture capitalists uh, as well uh, for a seed and, and uh, series A, series B and so forth. Take advantage of these workshops. For those of you who are not uh, familiar with i -Corps, you should be because the SBIR agencies set great store by customer discovery and validation. If you are at all not familiar with this, I strongly encourage you to attend these and learn as much as you possibly can. I also wanted to call your attention to the Naval X Tech Bridge. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a connected ecosystem network and it allows for and enhances collaboration between US Navy labs, industry, academia and other military branches. It's a tremendous opportunity to form collabor rela collaboration relationships and occupy space here in Riverside County and other parts of the United States for research and business development. It's an opportunity to develop and capitalize on a collaboration ecosystem to build productive and long-standing sustainable corporate partnerships. Finally, I, uh, this is a great opportunity. You've met many of us already. Dr. Ochoa has introduced you to several of our uh, uh, programs, but it's a great opportunity throughout the course of these next two weeks to learn as much as you can about the SBIR, STTR Resource Center, uh, the Epic Small Business Development Corporation, uh, the Excite Incubator, the National Science Foundation Innovation Corps, i uh, the Blackstone Techstars Launchpad Social Innovation Path, the Highlander Venture Fund, various competitive opportunities for seed funding, and, and also our nascent developing Oasis Innovation Park. More to come from that. So now, Hannah, perhaps the next slide. So as much as Misty and I may, may feel like, or would like to tell you, yeah, we did it all ourselves, not a chance. I wanna thank uh, robustly as much as we possibly can, and it still won't be enough, the amount of help that Mike Daniel, Daniel you gave us. Mike is a regional director, and Hannah Khaled uh, continues to work with us. Without her, there is no way in the world that we have, could have pulled off this conference, so we are immensely and eternally grateful to both of you and very, very thankful for the enormous amount of support that you provided us. I also wanted to tell you a little bit about the Orange County Inland Empire uh, Small Business Network and the high caliber, myriad of high caliber advisors that are there to provide consulting training, online courses and so forth. Um, and uh, so in addition to all of those that Dr. Ochoa, Scott, and everyone else had mentioned, the entire Orange County Inland Empire Network, SBDC Network, has just about every high-tier high uh, senior officer caliber uh, experts and mentors in any part of business development and operations encourage you to learn more about that. I also wanted to uh, give a great thanks also to other members of our team. Uh, Alexandra Orozco is responsible and heads up our international relations program. Jennifer Iteraldi has already been referenced to you by Scott. She heads up our Excite Incubator. 
Carolina Rosas, who I depend upon almost a daily basis. Uh, she's part of our Epic team. Uh, she never sleeps. Starting to suspect that she's a vampire, not entirely certain, but we're going to figure that out pretty quickly. My Temraz uh, runs the Blackstone Tech Stars Launchpad Innovation Path. Judy, Swine, Judy Sveinford, who saves my life on a daily basis, couldn't get anywhere without her, and uh, very much grateful for that. And I finally wanted to give great thanks to the Small Business Administration and the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development for their large, in large part, funding for us to provide all of these tremendous programs. So for mostly humanitarian reasons, I think I need to stop talking now. We're gonna transition in about five minutes, I believe, Misty, to our first speaker. Speaker, Chris, uh, Dr. Crystal Gwynn with the Department of Energy. This is going to be a full week. It's going to be an incredibly valuable week, tremendous opportunity to learn as much as you can, and even better opportunity for you to meet with and interact with experts and program directors. I strongly encourage and thank you for taking advantage of this opportunity. So we have at 10 o'clock, just a couple of minutes, we've got Chris O'Gwen with the Department of Energy. We're gonna follow up with Brian Baird with the longest acronym of any federal agency offering um, SBIR. That is an, an agency on focusing on disability, independent living and rehabilitation research great opportunity for those who are considering or working on uh, innovation ventures, transformative technology in, in that particular space. We're gonna take a break uh, from 12 until one, and then our first workshop, uh, headed by Jim Ilano, uh, who is a member of our uh, technology partnership team, is going to be leading a panel on the formation of corporate partnerships with five senior officer business development executives with corporations. They are going to be discussing how best you can reach out, do your homework, and form a very effective, a very productive relationship with a corporate partnership. Why do we have these workshops, all of them? Is that uh, they are the areas that I, again, consider to be deal killers. They are also the best opportunities for us to get funding. Strongly urge you to attend each one of these workshops in addition to the federal agency talks given by our program directors. Participate in one-on-one -on -one meetings if you have not made an appointment yet. Every one of these workshops, however, to wrap up, are critically, vitally important for the success of your SBIR proposal. I cannot underscore enough how critical they are. These are the areas that are our biggest challenges these are the areas that are greatest opportunities and the distinguishing characteristics between win or lose. Attend them, learn as much as you can, interact with the speakers, discuss any questions that you may have with any of the panelists, take advantage of it, enjoy it. This is gonna be a fun two weeks, very valuable to you all. So Misty, let's get ready to rumble, I guess, and get the show on the road. All right, we'll take a few minutes break and we will see you back here um, at 10 o'clock.